Today, I'm going to be breaking down some of my favorite tournament or GPP plays for this Week 9 NFL DraftKings main slate. And like I always do here with these videos, I'm going to kick it off with a couple of my favorite game stacks, and then we'll dive into some of my favorite individual plays and stacks. With that being said, let's dive right into this. All right, so kicking things off here with a couple of game stacks that I like here for this week. The first being this game between the Cowboys and Eagles. I like stacking up Dak Prescott with CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson, and then running it back with DeAndre Swift. Now, two big reasons here why I like attacking the Cowboys passing game. Number one, Jalen Hurts is projected to be the highest owned quarterback in tournaments this week, so I'm kind of pivoting off of that. And number two, this Eagles defense is phenomenal against the run ranking first overall in rush DVOA, but they just so happen to rank 23rd in pass DVOA. So they really are a pass funnel defense. And you can see the implied total here for this game is at 47 and a half points, the most on the main slate. So there's definitely some shootout potential here. Dak in the passing game looked really good coming out of the bye last week against the Los Angeles Rams. So trying to build off of that. Now running it back on the Eagles side of things here, honestly, I have no problem with AJ Brown or Dallas Goddard too, but I'm looking at this Cowboys defense here and don't get me wrong they're one of the best overall defenses in the NFL but they've been much better against the pass than they have been against the run hence the reason I'm leaning on DeAndre Swift as a run back and then another game that I like targeting here this weekend is that game between the Saints and Bears and I like stacking up Derek Carr with Elvin Kamara and Chris Olave and then running it back with DJ Moore for starters I like that this game is being played indoors I tend to lean on that a little bit more as the season progresses it doesn't look like we're going to have any bad weather in general this weekend, but playing indoors, there's always a little more shootout potential in my opinion. Now this game here has an implied total of 41 points, that's the fourth most on the main slate, and I like the Saints side of things here because they have an implied total of 25 points, that's the third most on the main slate as well. Now the reason I like putting in Camaro with this stack here is because this dude has seen a 27% target share this year, that is absolutely absurd for a running back, so there is a correlation there stacking him with Carr, and Chris Olave in my opinion is due for a big game here sooner than later. We all saw the replay last week, that ball hitting him in the helmet where he would have had a long touchdown. The air yards have been there, the targets have been there. I truly believe that Olave is going to have a big game here sooner than later. And then running it back with DJ Moore just makes sense. He's the number one wide receiver and really the number one overall offensive player in that Bears offense. And with Tyson Bajan under quarterback for the Chicago Bears, he has seen a 23% target share, so I don't mind the numbers there. And again, just a good match up here for the Saints overall as this Bears defense is one of the worst in the NFL ranking 31st overall in defensive pass DVOA. Now folks before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays here if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel I would greatly appreciate that. We just hit 3,500 subs here this past week. The next goal is to get to 4,000 subs. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so here today. I got football and hockey content coming out for you guys all season long. All right now diving into some of these individual plays here. I'm going to start with the quarterbacks, and I like C.J. Stroud this week of the Houston Texans, priced at $6,200 in a matchup at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. At this price here, we need 24.8 DraftKings points in order for him to hit 4x value, and this is a solid spot for him to bounce back after losing last week to the Carolina Panthers, a game the Texans probably should have won. This Buccaneers defense only has the 25th highest pressure rate this season, so Stroud should have a lot of time in the pocket, and they've allowed the ninth highest yards per attempt and the eighth most yards after the catch. I'm going to talk about Nico Collins here in just a few minutes. The yards after the catch stat there really sticking out to me. And for Stroud here, it's easy stacking options, right? We can go with Nico Collins and or Tank Dell. Now, moving over here to the running backs, and I'm going to highlight two guys today who are probably going to see some decent ownership this weekend. It's the most concentrated position here in Week 9. Every other position is going to allow for us to get contrarian, in my opinion, so I'm not afraid to eat the chalk here. The first guy I want to highlight is Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders, priced at $6,900 this week in a good matchup at home against the New York Giants. At this price here, we need 27.6 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value, and the volume has not been an issue for Jacobs this year. Year. He currently ranks top three for all running backs in carries 
targets, and red zone touches. Plus, back in week four in Aiden O'Connell's only start at the quarterback position, he saw 11 targets with him under center. I'm not banking on 11 targets again this week, but five plus, uh, that should be very realistic for him. And again, just a great matchup at home for him against this Giants defense, who ranked 27th overall in defensive rush DVOA. And then I am going to go back to Jonathan Taylor again here this week for the Indianapolis Colts, priced at $6,400 in a terrific matchup against the Carolina Panthers. At this price here, we need 25.6 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. Now, every week, he's seen an increased snap share. Last week, it was 61%. But with that being said, I honestly wouldn't be afraid to play Zach Moss this week. He's projected for 1% ownership, whereas Taylor's going to be very popular, and Moss is still involved in this offense. Either way, this is a great matchup for all running backs. The Carolina defense is bleeding fantasy points to this position, 33.5 DraftKings points per game, ranking dead last in the NFL in defensive rush DVOA. And then I'm going to highlight a few wide receivers here, going to name drop a couple of guys as well, but I'm going to stick in this game here between the Panthers and Colts, highlighting Adam Thielen here for the Carolina Panthers at $7,500. At this price, we need 30 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. He's proven he can do that a number of times already this year, seeing a 22% target share, 28% air yard share, and a 31% first read share. But I do want to mention here both DJ Shark and Jonathan Mingo are offering really cheap boom bust upside in my opinion both guys in the 3k range this week it's just a good spot for these wide receivers on the panther side of things in general as this colts defense ranks 21st overall in defensive pass dvoa the next guy I got on my list here then is Amari Cooper of the Cleveland Browns, priced at $6,100 this week in a great matchup at home against the Arizona Cardinals. At that price, we need 24.4 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. Love the numbers for him this year. He's going to have a blow-up game sooner than later as well. 23% target share, 43% air yard share, and a 31% first read share. Plus, Deshaun Watson is back here this week, and this Cardinals defense has not been good against the pass, ranking 29th overall in defensive pass DVOA, and they've allowed the fourth highest PPR points per game this season to perimeter wide receivers. And then the last wide receiver that I want to highlight here is Nico Collins. Name dropped him when I was talking about CJ Stroud. Priced at $5,800 this week in a matchup at home against the Buccaneers. At this price, we need 23.2 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. This is a guy who's seen an 18% target share, 29% air yard share, and a 26% first read share this year. But again, I mentioned this earlier. The Buccaneers have really struggled with wide receivers with yards after the catch. And Nico Collins just so happens to rank fourth overall amongst all wide receivers in the NFL in yards after catch per reception. But again, if you wanted to put in Tank Dell here, do a double stack or just stack Dell up with CJ Stroud, I have no problem with that either. Now we're going to get a little funky here on the tight end side of things. The first guy that I want to highlight is Taysom Hill here, the New Orleans Saints. And I don't know if I'd want to stack him up with Derek Carr. I think it makes more sense to just play him as a one-off individual play. He's priced at $4,700 here, again, playing the Bears at home, where we would need 18.8 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. Now, since week six here, he's averaging 65 and a half total yards per game, and he's been tight end number two, just behind Travis Kelsey in fantasy points per game. That was really something that caught my attention. I wasn't expecting that. And this is a guy who's projected for less than 1% ownership this week. So again, it's a goofy slate here this week. If you're trying to get unique, Taysom Hill will allow for you to do that. And then the next play here is someone I haven't highlighted in quite some time. That's going to be Kyle Pitts of the Atlanta Falcons, priced at $4,100 this week in a matchup at home against the Minnesota Vikings, where we would need 16.4 DraftKings points for him to hit 4x value. Now, honestly, I don't mind the numbers here for Pitts this season. He's got a 17.5% target share, 26.5% air yard share, and a 19% first read share, the most involved he's been in this offense since really ever coming into the NFL. But what I even more so like this week is Drake London is not expected to play, so Kyle Pitts should realistically be the wide receiver number one in this offense, and this Vikings defense hasn't necessarily been great against tight ends this year, allowing the eighth most receiving yards to the position. And then we're going to wrap up this video here with a couple of defenses, and I have no problem spending up for the Cleveland Browns here this week at $4,200. Yes, very expensive for a defense, but the matchup couldn't be better against the Arizona Cardinals, especially while playing at home. 
home at this price. We need 16.8 DraftKings points for them to hit 4x value. And again, great matchup here. It's a rookie quarterback in Clayton Toon getting his first NFL start against this defense who has been lights out all year long. This defense ranks second in pass DVOA, third in rush DVOA, and they've also created pressure 42.5% of the time. That's the best in the NFL. And then a cheaper defense that I like here in the 2K range this week is the New England Patriots priced at $2,900. Good matchup at home here against the Washington Commanders where we would need 11.6 DraftKings points for them to hit 4x value. Now, don't get me wrong, the Patriots will likely be a popular defense to target in general, but I do like the matchup here against Sam Howell, who's taken 41 sacks this year. That's 5.1 per game, the most in the NFL, and he's also had 11 turnovers with 8 interceptions and 3 fumbles. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great weekend here, folks. Let's win some money on this Week 9 main slate. In the meantime, I'm out of here.